Hi, this is Dr. Gargoslo from Healthy Sleep Care. Today we are going to discuss the treatment of restless leg syndrome. Probably you had or you had heard of people who have a lot of discomfort in the legs. They normally say, when I sit in front of computer or when I go to a movies or in road trip or especially airplane trip, my legs are going crazy. It's a very dis uncomfortable. I can't sit still, I have to move. There is an urge inside the person that they have to move, and particularly to move their legs. Most of the time, it happens intermittently and it's mild, but sometimes it's really, really severe and it really changes the quality of life of patients. Cases of depression and suicide um, are seen in a specialty clinics, especially for very um, severe cases, but they're not seen every day. Most of the time, these people have problem that is worse in the night and in the day, and it causes insomnia and inability to sleep. The patient with restless leg syndrome, they know if they have alcohol or if they have caffeine, it gets them more. If they are super tired, plus any of these things, they get them more. And if they accumulate like caffeine and alcohol at the same time, they will have more symptoms. We know the problem has to do with metabolism of iron inside the brain. We know that the storage of iron in some places in the brain is less. We know that the striatal dopamine is less. So sometimes we um, give them dopaminergic drugs for the dopamine system. Um, and we know that there are multiple genes are involved in the condition. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened and we also don't have a clinical way to assess the iron inside the brain. So we do um, iron studies of the peripheral blood. If you have RLS, if your doctor diagnosed you with RLS, you have to understand that you need to have a um, well replenished iron storage in your body. And we do that with blood work. If your initial blood work shows iron is not high, it should be. Uh, ferritin under 75 is a problem, even though lower levels are uh, considered normal in people who don't have RLS. But we want to increase the ferritin to 100. And also, if during the treatment, the ferritin comes to 100, 120, you still have symptoms. We want to increase it up to 300 is fine and it's not gonna harm your body. And we want to continue the iron replacement. Most of the time, the iron that is replaced is um, a pill, um, oral, and you take the pill. Sometimes we do the IV injection. Um, if you can tolerate the pill or if you take the pill and it doesn't work, then intravenous or IV injection is justified. You wanna make sure that you take the um, iron pills with occasional vitamin C that helps with the absorption. Um, also, it's okay to take the iron with um, food. The other um, index we look is TIBC and if it's less than 45%, we, we need to consider iron supplementation. Uh, it goes obviously beyond iron and one to 3% of population based on how we define the condition have this disease. And sometimes we have to use more strong medications. Before considering more strong medications, we have to make sure that the symptoms are not better explained by other conditions that you might have. For example, if somebody has a, uh, a disc problem in the back or somebody has arthritis, or um, muscle pain or leg cramps, all these can mimic the symptoms of restless leg syndrome, but they are not. So we have to be very careful to, um, to assess the patient carefully and to make sure that the patient's symptoms are not explained by something else better. Even though there are conditions that you have the disc pain and you have the restless problem, or you have the muscle pain and you have the restless leg syndrome, that um, 
that we want to categorize them as secondary restless leg syndrome. And um, in those cases, um, um, sometimes the specialist can help better and they have seen more complex cases and they can um, dissect things in a more detailed way. Uh, when a uh, restless leg gets more severe, you want to see at least twice a week symptoms that interferes with your sleep or interferes with your quality of life. So if you have an occasional symptom, for example, if you drink too much the next day, you have restless legs, um, that is intermittent and mild. And we don't want to give continuous medication for that. But if your symptoms are um, moderate to severe and continuous, then we can consider medications for it. One of the worst things less less does to people is causing insomnia. And in presence of ca too much caffeine and too much alcohol, this insomnia can get worse. So we as a doctor have to see if this patient had too much caffeine and have insomnia or too much caffeine is causing restless leg, that is causing insomnia. And if the caffeine is decreased, uh, both of these situations get uh, resolved. But the second one sometimes would need medication. Other things that can cause uh, uh, restless leg symptoms to get worse is a sleep fragmentation and insufficient sleep. So if you have a sleep problem that is causing fragmentation of the sleep, um, like a middle insomnia or like a sleep disorder breathing, like a sleep apnea, you can get worsening of um, restless leg symptoms. And also there is a um, situation that is periodic leg movement during the night that uh, get worse with it and has association with restless leg syndrome. Um, on the same token, if you don't sleep enough, your brain is going to have so many um, worse symptoms, like your attention is not there, your concentration is not there, you are uh, foggy and you are moody, and also you have worsening of restless leg symptoms. Uh, sometimes medication can cause uh, restless leg symptoms, and the most frequent medication that can cause them are antidepressant, um, things like Zoloft or Paxil or um, other groups of antidepressant like TCAs. For example, amitriptyline or triptyline are known to be um, causing restless leg symptoms or worsening of your symptoms. And uh, the only medicine that does not do that is Velbotrin or Bupropion. However, it is important that the doctor sees what's going on and what is the best thing to do because you don't want your depression to get worse and God forbid a suicide happen or something bad happened, you lose your relationship and your job. So um, definitely, if you think a depression medication is causing a worsening of restless like symptoms, talk to your doctor. I do remember there was a young lady who was going through a rough patch and rough relationship, and she did have some mental health issues as a background. So she was having rampant anxiety, rampant OCD, and also she was drinking a lot of coffee. And at the same time, she has a restless as symptom that exacerbated through, through this rough patch because of caffeine and not sleeping and also her medications. And even as a specialist, I all of these symptoms were so severe that I had to talk to expert colleagues from France and uh, we decided to continue his medication, uh, her medication, because the mental health symptoms were so bad that we all agreed that the restless leg comes second, even though it has its own problem. So we had to take care of the side effect another way. And she agreed and she was appreciative that all this happened for her. Um, so again, individual is approach and, and talking to your physician becomes of utmost importance. Today, I will delve a little bit more into um, intermittent and mild symptoms that we see very, very commonly in a lot of people. For example, in your neighborhood, if you have 5,000 people, uh, probably 150 people have that kind of symptom and would roll in for a um, 
mild to moderate um, RLS. So a lot of people deal with it. So let's say you're a student, you're young. Sometimes you go to a bar. Sometimes you have to drink a lot of coffee. Sometimes you, even though I don't recommend it and it's a bad thing to do and it's not gonna help you, but you pull the all-nighter. So all of them together, you are feeling your restless legs and you cannot sit in front of your computer to do your report. There is help. So um, first and foremost, we check the iron levels, we check the thyroid levels, we check the kidney to make sure the patient doesn't have other things that can mimic the same symptoms. We look for arthritis and muscle pain and these things. But if we say, okay, this is a restless leg symptom and situation, uh, what to do? Well, sleep better, drink less, and have less coffee. That would be a good start. And what else can be done, Doc? Drink better, make sure you don't have insufficient sleep. Okay, what next? Well, sometimes when your symptoms are bad, we can give you medications. But before that, make sure that you're not using antihistamine as a sleep aid. Um, also, make sure you're not on ongoing antihistamine. There are not many people who need that, and that is contributing in your symptom. Oh, whenever I take my um, nausea medication, this happened. Yes, some nausea medication, including metoclopramide, are known to cause this, so make sure you take it less or take an uh, alternative medicine that doesn't have that symptom or side effect. For occasional intermittent restless like symptom, for example, this person wants to go to airplane and she knows every time in the airplane from here to Australia, she's gonna get pretty bad symptoms. Um, there are three groups of medications that are helped, helping. First group is Cynomet. Um, even you can take it as, um, as needed when you're at home, if you have occasional symptoms and everything else that we told you, including iron level are checked. Um, there are Parkinson medications, Cynomet, or Levodopa, Carbidopa. You can take half a pill or one pill or even uh, extended release format of it. One pill on low dose will take good care of your symptom. This medication, if it's used so often, will have a paradoxical effect and will make your symptoms worse. So the authorities are saying, make sure you don't take more than three times a week. In my book, if I wanna use that, I make sure they don't take more than three times a month um, because that's for mild symptom and that's not for um, somebody who needs it a lot. However, there are two groups of medication that are recommended for mild cases. They have more symptoms and more stigma attached to them and both of them are addictive. Um, low dose opioids are an option like codeine is recommended, low dose codeine or tramadol um, for occasional use. And also in right patient, for example, somebody who has insomnia, benzodiazepine or benzodiazepine receptor agonists like Ambien or Sonata, which is Zalepolone or uh, Zolpidem, and also Temazepam have been um, discussed. I would be able to recommend them on as needed basis more often, two, three times a week. But again, both of them can be habit forming and you want to avoid them if possible. So you have to see who the patient is, what is the patient um, um, chances of getting addicted, what is the history of addiction in the family of the patient, what is the high risk behaviors that this patient gets involved in and decide for the right treatment plan for the person. If there is high risk problems, sign them at. If not, possibly codeine or Ambien or Zolpidem, Zaleplon, even Temazepam, Ativan can be used, but we have to have a personalized approach and individual care. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, next time I will discuss uh, 
the treatment of more severe cases of RLS, chronic and persistent RLS, and refractory cases. Thanks.